Hello Internet and welcome to historical headlines for the 9th of January. Britain introduces income taxes. Theft. We are in 1799, where Britain for the first time in its history introduced the income tax. Now, despite its prevalence today, where it is for most part the primary source of income for most modern day governments, the income tax is actually a fairly modern occurrence. For most of history, the standard taxation had been either in land or property taxes or in poll taxes, which is basically a payment for being allowed to exist. This is not entirely true, but a poll tax is a tax on a specific individual for being there and for having certain privileges. Most taxes have in fact always been raised extraordinarily, which is why most, for instance, Western nations would have a parliament to begin with, because the parliament would then vote taxes to whatever the king or emperor or whoever was in charge of the governance would want to do at any given time, and he could not use his own income, which was usually tied down to his own land area, so the parliament which consisted of representative of the populace would then vote money for him. Altogether, taxation has always been seen as a little bit skeevy and something to avoid, if at all possible, though of course it has always also been with us, probably since the Phoenicians did that great service to humanity that is called inventing the cash system. However, in 1799, the British government under the long-term Prime Minister, even though that title didn't really exist at the time, William Pitt the Younger, introduced an actual progressive income tax. And to guide you through this momentous occasion in Western history, since it's basically from Britain at the time, of course, that practically every other nation took its hints in economic matters, here is our new time-traveling correspondent for economic affairs, Alexander Smith Smythe Winchester. Alexander. Yes, thank you, studio, and a very good evening to you all. It will be remembered how Britain has been fighting France in the Revolutionary Wars for the last seven years since the French decided to chop the head off their king. It is also probably known to most of you that Britain itself does not actually have that big of an army since most of its military budget is going towards the powerful navy. Now, the navy is definitely a bulwark towards any kind of aggression towards our isles, which is why a victory such as the one the Viscount Nelson had last year at the Nile is duly celebrated. However, it also means that Britain cannot really invade the continent or really send any forces to the continent to battle Napoleon's forces directly without help from any of the other continental powers such as Austria, Russia or Prussia. We all, of course, remember the disastrous Walcheren expedition in 1793, where the Duke of York so ignominiously marched 10,000 men up a hill and marched them straight back down again. <laughs> so the way Britain helps is by controlling the seas and bankrolling the various coalitions that are being formed first against revolutionary France and later against the first consul Napoleon, who is now in charge of the French nation and its incomparable armies. However, despite Despite Britain being the richest country in the world, there is very little doubt that they cannot in and of themselves carry such amazing economic burdens as this war has opposed upon them. And so Prime Minister William Pitt the Younger has implemented an income tax, a progressive income tax, where the rich are paying more than the poor. It basically goes from the poorest having to pay two pence to the pound of their income and the richer among us have to pay up to two shillings. With this, the government government hope to be able to fund the war effort, keep the fleet available and make sure that the various coalitions raised against France will also be able to put soldiers in the field without having them go hungry. Of course, the internal squabbles towards this tax has been significant. Many has decried it as a tyrannical attack on the freedom of Britain and the Britons themselves. It's one thing to tax luxury such as houses you have to live in, but to tax the very income of people goes beyond any kind of dictatorial regime that even the worst of the medieval kings have supposedly been allowed to do. Prime Minister
Seems the Pip the Younger, however, is standing firm in his belief that such a measure is absolutely necessary if Britain is supposed to be staying in the war against France that he considers the absolutely most important question in our political era. But to see what the average Briton have to say about this extraordinarily new development in taxation systems, here is a comment from one of those affected, Mrs. Cornelia Teeksum. Mrs. Teeksum, the income tax. William Pitt, the younger. There's two. Look, I don't know who you are, but the only Pitt I know is the one mealsman goes down every blimmin' day and I make him his pasty so he can eat some it. We needs every penny we got, Lloyd, like, and if this Pitt character wants to take our two pennies, he can come get it from me cold, dead... Billy! If I told you once, I told you a thousand blatant toys that trying to put your sister in the fire. Do you want the strap again? No? And you will not be going to the hangin' this Saturday if this keeps up. Look, get out me way, mister. I got things to do and an husband to keep up. Thank you, Mrs. Teeksum. Very coherent and enlightening. And with this strong message from the British people towards William Pitt's new progressive income tax, it's back to the studio. And thanks to you, Professor Smith Smythe Winchester. As indicated, the income tax as Pitt suggested it was actually progressive by modern standards, insofar as it was gradient based upon your general income rather than a flat across the board tax rate. It was also incredibly successful in as much that it actually did raise the income needed for Britain to fight and survive the Napoleonic Wars as both a independent power as well as a leading economical one. It was also unspeakable unpopular. Not just with the people who have to pay it and the opposition, but deep within Pitt's own governing coalition was a deep-seated, almost primal British hatred towards that kind of taxation grab towards their personal freedoms. To a certain degree, the Britons at this time really did believe that taxation was theft and had in fact, as we discussed previously, fought several civil wars against the royal powers throughout the years when their tax rates either became too high or too dictatorial. In fact, it was already in 1802 when a temporary peace between Britain and France occurred that the income tax was then immediately again abolished by the new Prime Minister Henry Addington, who had taken over from Pitt, who had been losing in health at the time. However, when war broke out again only some months later in 1803, the income tax was once again established in order to pay for the war effort and remained on the books until 1816, at which point it was again promptly abolished and in fact was suggested publicly in Parliament officially to be struck from all records, banned from all books and buried in a peat bug so the later ages would not never see and judge the politicians of that era of Britain for having introduced something as dictatorial and inhumane and just generally morally corrupt as an income tax. Unfortunately for us, and unfortunately for those politicians, it had simply proven too successful to be completely forgotten, and in 1845, when the new Prime Minister at that time, Robert Peel, needed to deal with the heavy increases in budget that the voting reforms of the 1830s had brought with it, the re-establishing of the income tax was one of the means which he turned to, and in fact it has been with us ever since, as well as as in other countries, such as my own in Denmark, of course, who took their, as I said, hints about economic polities from Great Britain at the time. Sad or not, depending on your stance towards taxation. However, this was today's headline from the 9th of January. Britain introduces income tax theft. I hope this has been of some interest to you. I will be back tomorrow with another historical headline. Until then, I have been the Sage, and I wish you all a very happy day.